Good. Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. Sorry about the technical delays. Um, on behalf of the Geotechnical Research Center and the um, student chapter of the Canadian Geotechnical Society, um, it is our great pleasure to welcome Professor Yin um, to present his work today for Western. Um, Professor Yin received his PhD from the University of Manitoba in 1990 and joined the um, Hong Kong Polytechnic University in 1995. Um, and he's now the chair professor in soil mechanics and the leader of the geotechnical unit there. Um, he's been awarded numerous awards, um, including um, the Mao Yisheng Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering Youth Award in 2000. Um, and so it is our, with great pleasure that I'd like to invite you to give your presentation um, and look forward to the content. Uh, yeah. Okay, maybe it's okay. Uh, first of all, first of all, thank uh, uh, many thanks to uh, Professor Liu Shang and Professor Li inviting me to here, and uh, I visited your lab, a wonderful lab, and uh, you have done very good work, and also and uh, I had meetings, joint meetings, okay, with your students and uh, listened to their very good work, uh, recent work done by yourself. Uh, today is my great pleasure, okay, to share with you uh, my work in this particular area, okay. Uh, now, linear rheological models of clay soils and applications. Okay, uh, I don't read. I don't read all the titles, subtitles. Okay, I will go one by one later. And um, can can you remove the the top? Uh... Oh, it's better. Okay, move move the sideways. Okay, is is better. Okay. Okay. Uh, first one introduction regarding sediments and creep. Uh, the tide dependency or tide ray effects. Are very really common for for soils, okay, even for rocks, okay, and uh, they can cause uh, many different problems like uh, excessive sediment, uh, failure, and so on. Okay, I don't go to details, okay, and uh, a few examples. Okay, um, I, uh, some uh, some uh, text I don't read. Okay, and uh, to show you, one example is uh, Tower of Pisa. Uh, Tower of Pisa was constructed. On the soft soils, you can see here the, the profile, geological profile of the foundation soils, sandy, sandy clay silt, uh, upper clay. It's uh, some kind of um, um, clay soils, okay. And uh, the Tower of Pisa settled uh, more than three meters, okay, inclined more than two degrees, okay. Uh, in two, 2000, uh, my wife and, and uh, my son, at that age, and, and uh, visit the site. Uh, and uh, 2000, a photo are taken by me. Uh, they didn't pay attention to the joints. I guess joints are on the panels on the on the site um, to 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 stabilize the towers. Okay, and some um, some measures. Okay, so I took the photos on on the joints on the panels. Okay, and they're quite interesting. Okay, and now they uh, they drill a hole and uh, grow the foundation soils and uh, the the tower was stabilized, okay, no further um, in, in, in inclination, okay, so there's a photo. This is a good example, okay, regarding structures on a soft soil ground. Another very famous example is uh, two, uh, uh, two artificial islands in uh, near Osaka. This is a Kase, Kasa International Airport, okay, the two runways are totally, totally built on two artificial islands. A uh, very big islands, you can see. The first island, uh, five square uh, kilometers, another one on uh, the 5.5 five, 5 square kilometers, okay? They built this island first for first runway, then build a second runway. They face big problems on the sediment, I can show you. We also visit the site, okay? The first runway. Uh, you can see the geological profiles, okay? You can see actually for the, this is uh, the, the, the seabed profile, okay? There's a runway one, runway two. For the first layers around 24 meters, they improve it uh, by install a uh, sand compaction piles, see? Sand compaction piles, okay? They compact the sand in the corners, in the soils, 
to make soils are strong, but only on the surface, okay, 24 meters. For the soils below, no improvement. Maybe soil below, maybe not as soft, but still can settle down, okay? Uh, you can see for the first runway, I mean, two runways. For the first runway, you can see the construction started, okay, artificial island started, finished around um, uh, 91. Then the vertical node was, uh, I mean, the, the field load was fixed, okay? So actually the weight of a runway, the weight of airplanes are very small compared to the weight of the field materials, okay? When, once uh, the island was constructed, the, the, the weight is almost constant, no, no, no further increase. But you can see the sediment continue, okay, even after here, uh, um, uh, 1990, sediment continues to increase, continues to increase, you can see, continues to increase. So the vertical node is a constant, but the sediment continues to increase, increase, increase a lot, okay? Uh, in the sediment, maybe some sediment is due to primary concentration, but some sediments are due to creep. Especially the creep part can be very big, can be very big. And uh, the wrong way, the first wrong way opened in 1994, may, around three years later, okay, opened here, but sediment, further, further sediment occur. You know, after the construction of the wrong way, when the airport is, was open uh, in operation, then the sediment continues to occur. For this part of sediment, we call a post-construction sediment. That means sediment after everything is, is built. Then we, we still can observe further sediment. And as engineers, as civil engineers, we want to control the sediment, okay? This post-construction sediment is very bad for structures, for the users, okay? So we want to make this a post construction as small as possible, but unfortunately here, it's still very big. It's, it's, it's still very big. You can see it's very big. Uh, in particular, I mentioned to you, let me see. Uh, I got this figure from two professors in Japan published in 1999. According to original calculation, the sediment, okay, up to even 2030, no more than six meters. Okay, according to prediction, sediment prediction, but the actual sediment much bigger than six meters, okay? Even more than nine meters, 9.1 meters. Okay, you can see the, the data uh, I got from the website, okay? More than, more than six meters. So the calculated sediment was much, much smaller than real, real sediment measured. Okay, the, the errors, okay? The relative errors is 34%. Is a relative error, okay? So this is a problem here. What's wrong with the calculation? Is uh, the values of parameters are not reliable or the calculation methods itself have some problems, okay? So, and it's, this kind of sediment is mainly caused by creep. So you can see the creep sediment can be very big, okay? Uh, I don't know all the details. At least we rem remember creep sediment is very important, contribute a lot to the post Construction, construction sediment. So we have to pay attention to the creeps compression, okay? So the photo taken by us, uh, again, my wife and I, and uh, the Japanese professors, and also including Professor uh, Richard Jordan from uh, Imperial College, uh, is the technical committee on, on the International Soil Mechanics uh, Technical Engineering Society. Um, we visit uh, the, the basement of the first runway in two, 2008, actually to compensate the sediment, they check up the columns, you know, by hydrologic, then put the metals, okay, underneath, metal uh, plates underneath to, to compensate the sediment. And uh, this is not a good solution to the problem because uh, if good solution, the good solution is make post sediment very small rather than so big. And this compensation, this kind of measures are not good enough, but we have, they have no other choice, okay? So this is uh, the problem they face now in Japan. Okay, this is the first runway. Second runway at that time when we visit uh, this uh, Kaiser International Airport, the, the second runway was still on the construction. I believe they learned a lesson from the construction of first runway so that for the second runway, 
they uh, improve soil, the tar longer. They install again the sand compaction piles. They apply such surcharge longer time. Wait, the sediment occurred as much as possible. So waiting a uh, 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 longer time. Okay. So you can see they wait longer time. Okay. So the sediment, the overall sediment, it was bigger than first runway. Why? Because the second runway is further away from the shoreline. The water is deeper, but the deposit might be the thicker. So, so the total sediment are bigger. You can see it's 12 meters, even, even 40 meters. But the post construction sediment is smaller. You see, they wait a longer time. Then the post, uh, then runway open in here. The post sediment is smaller. Okay. So this is a, because they wait, they improve the soils better and also apply the charge a longer duration so that the post construction sediment is smaller, but it's still quite, uh, it's still a few meters. Okay. But it's better than first runway. Okay. In Hong Kong, and uh, Professor Liusen and stay in Hong Kong, 1994, and uh, you know the uh, geology of, of Hong Kong. This is the Hong Kong airport, uh, first runway, second runway. When Hong Kong construct the Hong Kong airport, all the marine depots were removed in order to avoid probably uh, notch sediment. Okay, all the marine depots are removed, replaced by sand. So finally, you ask me the question to the notch. Finally, the sediment for the airport uh, was very small, no more than 50 millimeters. You, see, you can see compared to Japan, it's more than 10 meters, but in Hong Kong, it's only within uh, 50 millimeters because all the marine deposits removed. Be, below marine deposit uh, was very stiff, allu alluvian, uh, so it's very stiff. Further below was the best rock, okay? And uh, the whole thickness was not as thick as uh, Kasa Indonesia Airport. So the sediment is small, but but a third runway has been constructed here, uh, even though we use cement to mix the soils, improve the soils, okay? But the sediment will be bigger for the third runway, finished already for third runway, uh, but we don't have data yet. Should it be more than 50 millimeters? We don't have data yet, okay? Uh, in Hong Kong, uh, we are going to construct uh, uh, three more uh, artificial islands on the seabed here, around here, or around this one, around this one, around a nature island. Construct three uh, artificial islands on the uh, on the seabeds. The total area is one thousand hectares. So in Hong in, in the future, uh, there's this Hong Kong island, and uh, there will be uh, subways and uh, traffic uh, road to connect Hong Kong Islands to this uh, uh, new town. Then this is to Nanto Island to the airport. Okay, in the future, uh, maybe more than half a million people will live in these areas. Uh, I believe the sediment will be issue. We have to find a way to improve the soils and to control the post-construction sediment. Okay, post-construction sediment, we have to control, make it as smaller as possible. Oh, there's another case occurred in Hong Kong before more sediment. Okay, I, I go to, and the why, uh, creep contribute a lot to post construction sediment. Okay, uh, the first question is what is creep? What's the creep? Creep is a mechanical phenomena. It's a phenomena. Okay, is um, continuous deformation on the constant load. Creep is on the constant load. Then you can observe continuous deformation. In soil mechanics, we know the autonomy test. We take a sample from the site, put the soil here. The soil is E here. Normally, for autonomy test, the thickness is only 20 millimeters, very small. Is is element test, like an element test. Okay. Then we have a, a pour of stone, pour of stone on the top. We will apply water load, keep it constant. But we can observe the compression, tight dependent compression with the time, gradually increase, increase, finally getting stable because the autonomy test is a confined test. The natural deformation are confined to zero, you reach the winds. So finally sediment will get stable, okay? So this is a creep particular for source in autonomy test. Another one, if you see the saturated source, for saturated source, there are soil particles, then water. 
for fully cited source. And for case, actually, the particles are not um, rounded uh, particles. Actually, it's uh, the plates for case. Okay, you can see. Uh, so this is a place. And on the place, there are waters, absorbed waters in the voids, there are uh, uh, waters. And the whole skeleton to, uh, together, we call so a skeleton. We study, we develop a uh, constant models, not for soil particles, not for the water, it's for soil skeleton. Okay, we have a elastic plastic model or other any models are for soil skeleton together, excluding the waters. Okay, but for K particles, the absorbed water, some waters are uh, 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 attached to the surface of clay. This kind of water can be considered a part of soil particles. Okay. And um, we, we study, we develop our models for the soil skeleton, okay? Not the individual particles, not for water, okay? Keep in mind. And we use effective stress for constant models, okay? Uh, one, uh, I mentioned this autonomy test before. Uh, on the uh, vertical load, and uh, we have a rich wind to conf uh, confine the soil, soil is here. And we can determine on the vertical load, then we know the vertical stress, okay? Then we can measure the vertical deformation, displacement, then we can calculate the voice ratio. Uh, then on the, on the constant load, voice ratio will decrease with the time, okay? Voice ratio decrease with the time. Then we plot the time in a local scale. So we can see, plot this curve. Okay, this is a very famous curve in soil mechanics you learn. And you can see uh, a, a turning point, the turning point here, but we draw the line, tangential line, uh, we have intercepting point. And uh, this, this point is considered to be uh, the end of primary consolidation. The end of primary consolidation, what's the meaning of that? The meaning is excess pore pressure at this point is nearly zero, nearly zero. So, when the pore pressure is near zero, we still can observe continuous compression with the time, uh, nearly a uh, constant slope. And this slope is, uh, is uh, with the coefficient to describe the slope is the C alpha E. C alpha E is the voice ratio change degrees, but we use the negative here because degrees is negative, negative is the positive over local time increase, okay? This is a CRFE definition, uh, so-called secondary compression is a basically creep, okay? In this period, okay, what we call is the primary concentration, excess pore pressure is more than zero, okay? So this, uh, uh, this is called primary concentration. And some people consider no creep in this period, okay? Not some people, okay? And some people consider only creep occur off this point, but in the new, Understanding, okay, the creep actually occur not only in this, this this period and this also in this period. Okay, the new understanding. So this line can be extended back to this period. Okay, this is a new understanding. Okay, this uh, this is a creep we can see very clearly, and this is a creep even though we cannot see, but we can approve. We also creep occur in this area. Okay, can uh, can be approved. Uh, CFIE, I mean, you can see the, uh, the, 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 the figure. CFIE is the slope of that uh, line. The larger CFIE does more creep. So in Hong Kong, uh, CFIE not very big. It's 0 0.3 to 1, maybe to 2%. But for some, uh, like uh, some, uh, for example, Mexico City clay. Mexico City clay is the two number here. Two is quite big. Okay, cross line here is uh, maybe four or five, uh, for six is uh, six is uh, is a peat, is a, a fibrous peat, okay? It's very big because this kind of soil is a clay mixed with uh, some root, okay? Some uh, organic materials, okay? It's very big. So in general speaking, CFIE is a good indication of the visco behavior of the soils. The I mean, the creep magnitude, okay? It's a good indication. For sand, for seal, it's very small. And why creep occur for clay? Uh, I mentioned before, clay is a place. Is the clay is the place, and the clay itself carry a negative uh, uh, charge. For water molecular, 
has two pools. One, one side is positive, one side is negative. And for the positive, positive side of water molecular actually is attracted to the clay surface, which has a negative charge, electrical charge. So this water is absorbed on the surface of the clay, cannot, cannot move freely, cannot move freely. Similarly, some water on the surface of plastic, you can, you can do the test very easily. Put the water on the surface, water cannot flow easily. It's attached on the surface due to some chemical reactions. This kind of clay is a source of the viscous behavior of the soils, okay? What we call water absorption by clay surface, okay? This is the main fundamental reasons. I don't go to detail. So creep of clay soil is due to visco absorbed water in the basic level uh, on the clay particles. Maybe some deformation of clay paste, maybe some, but it's small. More important is, is the visco rearrangement, sliding deformation of clay particles together what we call a collision structure together, then deformation, risk of deformation is very big. And absorbed water is not free water, cannot, cannot flow on the hydronic gradient, is uh, uh, attached to the surface, okay? On the, on the effect stress, this water can, can come out. Um, when the, on the, on the hydronic gradient, they cannot flow uh, freely, okay? Cannot flow freely on the hydronic gradient. It's not the normal water, okay? And how to calculate the sediments? There are some assumptions I mentioned before. Uh, for example, assumptions uh, A, assumption B, I don't go details today, okay? It's all we need to creep, all we need to creep. And uh, I'll go to the second part, and uh, because the title of my talk is uh, now linear rheological models, okay, of carry source, then I have to talk about the linear rheological model first, okay, before I can go into no linear. There are many. Uh, linear models or linear rheological models. And the uh, Hoax law it can be, is considered to be a linear elastic spring model, but no rheology there, but it's a linear model. Uh, Newton's law is, is a rheological model. It's a visco flow body, is a rheological model, is a linear rheological model. Same length body is for rigid uh, plasticity, is a one extreme, okay, one extreme. As following uh, models are linear rheological models, okay? The first one is the Maxwell model, is a spring plus dashboard. Dashboard is uh, Newton's visco uh, dashboard. Spring is referred to Hoax law. Then we have a Kelvin's model, uh, some composite models I'll show you uh, one by one. Uh, I'll show, uh, especially Maxwell model is uh, refer to a, a series connection of a dashboard and spring. This dashboard is a Newton's whisker flow model. This spring is a hoax law. The two connect together. We can, we call this a Maxwell model, okay? We are not a model. It's a linear because uh, the coefficient enter, coefficient E are constant, okay? Another model is, uh, is a connection of a spring, a Newton's dashboard in parallel way. Okay, then this is uh, what we call a Kelvin's model. And there are many other models, okay? Um, I'll show you. Oh, especially the Max Maxwell linear rheological model can be derived. I mean, the constitutive relationship can be derived by considering, for example, spring, okay? Uh, for the spring, uh, we can use the Hoax law to describe that means strain is equal to effect stress divided by Young's modulus, Young's modulus constant. But differentiation, then we have a strain rate and stress rate, and E, the constant. So, so when you do the differentiation, we have, there's no change. For the dashboard, according to Newton's uh, visco body, uh, the effect stress, effect stress is proportional to the strain rate by a constant coefficient enter. So we take the strain rate out, the strain rate is equal to effect stress divided by enter. So this is strain rate, uh, visco strain rates, this is enough, enough, enough the strain rate, because the spring and dashboard are connected in a series. So total strain rates, okay, the total, okay, total is, is from here to here is equal to, this is refer to total strain rates, equal to elastic strain rates and the vis visco strain rates. Uh, elastic is from here to put into here, and viscous rate is from here, put into here. 
Hey, this is a consistent model already. Is a consistent model. Is so simple, easily derived. Okay, so this one can be written to this here, or written to the partial differential equation in the form. When we apply the consistent models to to the consolidation problems, um, we use the partial. Uh, we use the partial time because we have a vertical coordinates, so partial time. This actually is a consistent model. Is a linear. Uh, real logic model, this is a model, and uh, I call this, I myself, I started to call this one, okay, I believe I, I was the first one to call this one, is the elastic physical plus model. In the history, in the books, textbooks, people all call this one uh, is a, a, a real logic model. But uh, I believe I, probably I'm, I was the first one to call this one is the elastic uh, physical plus model. Is the elastic, we refer to this. A uh, viscoplastic is called this one. Why? We are called this viscoplastic. Visco doesn't mean something related to time. Plastic, we know that plastic refers to something, the strain cannot be recovered when the load is unnoted. We load, we have deformation. When you unload it, some strains can, cannot be recovered. This is a plastic. And this plastic strain is a time dependent. So the visco, this word, word is is uh, is uh, affiliated with the plastic together, and the visco cannot be applied to the elastic. Okay, don't put the visco on the elastic because the elastic part can be totally recovered. Okay, so if, for example, for this spring, when you apply load, you have compression. When the load is released to zero, back to zero, the spring is totally bounced back. So for the spring, the deformation can be totally recovered, and nothing to do with the time. So don't put visco in the front of uh, elastic uh, part. And in part particular, some people say, some people say Maxwell model is a visco elastic model. Uh, some books still say the visco elastic is wrong. Maxwell model is not a visco elastic model because the elastic part is not viscous. Okay, so uh, be careful, okay? But a Kevin's model can be a uh, viscoelastic. I want to tell you why. Okay, because the Kevin's model, the strain can be recovered. This model can be called a viscoelastic model because uh, when the node is applied, then if you have a slow deformation responses. When the load is reduced to zero, then the strain can be totally recovered. So we can call Kevin's model is a viscoelastic. But don't call Maxwell model is a visco elastic. It's wrong. It's an elastic visco plastic. Okay, we have to be very careful. So that's why I said here visco elastic. This one is wrong. Visco elastic for Kevin's model is okay. So be careful the definition. Okay, we must be very logic, very scientific, and very clear regarding the, the terminology. Okay. And there are many other models, okay? Combination of springs, a dash port, a plastic joints, many, okay? I don't go to here. There are many different names you can see. But all these kind of models are considered to be linear real logical models. Of course, when we reach the limit, uh, reach the plastic uh, hinge limit, maybe we have plastic. Before that, everything is linear real logical models. There are many combinations. And um, nowadays, uh, people, this kind of models are not so useful, okay? But this kind of linear behavior, not so good for soils. Maybe for some range for rocks, I'm not really sure. For soils are not good, okay? So, so not good, okay? And uh, there are a few names I want to mention, including Professor K. I know from Western, okay? And uh, first, I want to mention Professor Tong Chung Ki, okay, first. And um, he got a PhD from a university in, in Netherlands. He was the first one to apply the linear real logical models. This is this kind of linear real logical models. Okay, you can see this is a Maxwell model, but put a spring in parallel. This is a, a combination of different uh, elements. Okay, we apply this particular linear real logical models in this consolidation equation. Then he got the analytic solutions. Okay. You can get the analytic solutions. Then he was the first one to do so. To so combine linear relative models with the consolidation of the source. Um, Professor Kevano, probably the second one. 
because he published a paper later, 1961, also read earlier compared to this one, 1996, uh, he put this model. This model, this model is different, uh, different, okay? This is a Kevin's model. And then uh, in last spring here, uh, this model uh, um, uh, into the consultation equation and also got the analytic solutions. So Professor Kevin know he, he did the very um, early works in this area, okay? Uh, later, he changed to share and the rocket mechanics, uh, th that area. But originally, his original work was in soil mechanics. Uh, uh, application of linear real logical models in the consolidation uh, equations. Uh, another, one, another person I would like to mention is Professor Beren, very famous, the first director of Norwegian Geotechnic Institute. Uh, he published this, uh, this figure based on the data from odometer tests uh, with creep, okay? For different, uh, this, uh, this is in the log scale, okay? In the log scale, this is a voice ratio. When you apply a load, okay, a load here on different work stress, so here, say here, say this is for say this is for one year, just example, okay. Then you apply another load here, or say one year, another load, a higher load, also one year. You can draw a line, draw a line, and for each load, you keep its long duration, longer duration, say up to three years for what it loads, three years, then come to here, maybe thirty years, come to here, okay. So with a longer duration, but for the same longer no, uh, duration, for the same duration, the three years, you draw a line together. For 30 years, line together, 300 years, line together, uh, basically in parallels, okay, parallels. So, so this figure show us, show us the vertical stress. This vertical stress can be effective stress, okay? And the worst ratio is the strain. The stress and the strain are, not unique, are not unique, but depend on the time. So this is a time-dependent stress and strain behavior, right? You can see on the, the same stress, the time different. For example, same a time different, the the the, the work ratio is different, decreased. It's not unique. It's related to the time. So conventional uh, elastic model or elastic plus models cannot be applied to this kind of source because the behavior is time dependent. It's a very, a very clear observation. Another thing is when the, the creep rate, the creep rate here refers to the vertical strain rate, vertical strain rate, okay? The, uh, the strain rate uh, here is bigger, that means the speed, the creep speed is faster. With the time increase come to here on the, the same vertical stress, the, the rate is smaller. When the time further increase, the creep rate is even smaller. Okay, for example, come to C, the creep rate even smaller. Okay, this is from here to here to here from the automated test. We can get a creep rate here. Then you can imagine another student, another researcher can do a different test for the same source. He will do a test to the loading from here to here to the D, then unloading unloaded to the same C. I mean, do a different test rather than creep test. I do a loading test, unloading from D to C to the same point of C. This is one, another uh, one path. The path I mentioned before is creep from here to here, to uh, another path. And here in the figure, we have two different ways to get the point of C. I want to ask you, for, at the point of C, for two different ways, two different paths, one is from vertical, Another one is for the loading, unloading to the same point of C. The creep rate is the same or different. I tell you, my answer is the same. It's the same answer is the same. The creep rate is the same. The, the, the creep rate here is a plastic strain rate is the same. This, this is a phenomena is true, not just for source, also for rock, and also for your frozen, frozen soils. Of course, for frozen soils, another factor you have to consider is the temperature. Recently, I have one student have extend my nonlinear model to consider temperature. You can read our paper, just published, okay? So temperature we have to consider for permafrost, okay? So, so the, the plastic strain rate at any point in the stress, stress and strain is unique. 
for any state point is unique. No matter how you get this point from here to here, from north to here is, is the same. This is a very important observation and is true. And for, for I say not, not all materials are to the materials are known. For rocks, uh, frozen soil, for KD soil, it can be the same, okay? And um, this is uh, Professor Beren, this is my supervisor. Uh, you know my supervisor in Manitoba. is a very nice professor, uh, Professor Jim Graham. And uh, actually he retired. He's an emeritus professor and um, former president uh, CGAs, former chief editor of uh, CGJ. And he also did the postdoc study on the uh, Berlin. Okay, he mentioned to me. <laughs> he, he did the postdoc works on the uh, with the Professor Berlin. Okay, I show you the, the history. Okay, the history. This is our model. Okay, we developed in 1998, 1994, and this model is a nonlinear real knowledge model. If you compare this model with the Maxwell model, the structure is very similar. It's very similar. You can see the strain rates, the strain rates. The, the stress rate, effect to stress rate, effect stress rate, the Young's module is constant, but Young's module here is depending on the stress. This is for Cambridge model is the same. Cambridge model, the, 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 the elastic part is depending on, dependent on the stress. So this is not linear elastic. And uh, for viscoplastic, for is referred to the dashboard, port, viscoplastic is uh, depending on the stress only. Then over enter is constant. But in our model, this viscoplastic part is dependent on the stress and the strain. Actually, they're all together. All together is viscoplastic strain rate. Viscoplastic strain rate is dependent on the strain and the stress only, the state only. Nothing to do with how do you, how do you get the point is it's, it's unique. Okay, the effect stress and the strain, then we have a unique uh, viscoplastic strain rate. I, I believe for the rock, soft rock is the same. You can try, or it's the same. So you can see the similarity of the two models. And um, I don't go to details. Okay, if you're interested, you can read our papers. And this paper I published in 1989 in Canadian Geotechnic Journal. So far, in the past uh, more than 30 years, the highly cited papers for the last year of the journal. For, for that whole year, even up to today, is highly cited. Okay, you, this is a website to uh, do the statistics, not by me, but the website, highly cited. Okay, In, for this particular year of the journal, highly cited, the only, the highly cited paper uh, in that journal. Okay, I don't know details. I, I don't read all this one, okay? And, um, and actually, following a few slides show us how to derive by hand, uh, step by step. This nonlinear model looks nonlinear, but can be derived regularly, okay, step by step. I don't go to, I don't, I don't go to de details, and uh, Dr. Libin can pass my PPT to you, okay? You can read later, read the paper later. So my model, nonlinear real logical model, is very, very uh, logic, can be derived by hand. Easily, okay. Not by not by curve feeding, not by curve feeding. It's not the empirical correlation. It's the two constant models and nonlinear models. I don't go details, okay. So I skip all this one. Don't go, don't. I save time for for questions, okay. Uh, I show you. Let me see. Actually, I tell I mentioned it before. Okay, this part is a viscoplastic rate. So viscoplastic rate rate is dependent on the strain and the effect just only. Okay, this is unique relationships, okay? I don't go details. And how to determine parameters, you can also read the papers to determine all the parameters. All the parameters in this nonlinear biological models have physical meanings. I don't go details. Because it's impossible for me to finish all the uh, slides one by one, but I leave the slides to you. You can study it. And, uh, and uh, another issue is once you have uh, derived this model, how you approve your motor is right or is wrong. The first one you approve the, the, the motor, constant motor is good, is use different tests, the data from different tests to verify it. Actually, the, the parameters of motor are determined from multi-staged automatic test. 
okay, that the, all the polynomials can be de determined by this test. Then uh, we, then we, once the model, the polynomials are, are kind of pitched, then use the model to make a prediction for other tests. For example, for constant weight of strain test, and we do the compression at different speed, very slow and very fast, even to the unloading, reloading, in different tests. I use the model to make predictions, then compare your predicted results with the, the data from different tests. You can see the comparison here are fitting very good, very well. Uh, all model can, uh, can, can consider uh, different strain rate effects. And also the, the, the pre-concentration pressure is also dependent on the, the, the speed. And all can be predicted. And the, the, the fittings, I mean, the prediction for the models and the, the data from the tests are very good. Uh, agreement. So that's the way to verify the model. Okay, I don't go details. Okay, I was study I study University of Manitoba when I was young, uh, younger than you now. <laughs> of course, you you graduate already. Uh, my professor, uh, Professor Jim Graham. Uh, actually, before I came to Western, uh, I, I drive my wife to to Ni Niagara Falls because uh, Professor Jim Graham told me to attend an international conference in Niagara, Niagara Falls. So we go back in after more than 30 years and some good memories, okay? And uh, when I study at the University of Manitoba, you can see I'm not really as um, fat as now. <laughs> uh, I study very hard and this is my lunchbox. And at that time, uh, no computer. Uh, this one PC 286, uh, in only two, I don't remember, in all department, and we have the share, 286, very slow computer, okay? And basically, all the calculation done by hand. You can see my uh, my, my picture when I was young, uh, getting very old. You know? I will retire, okay, about one year later. But uh, it's good to have a good memory. And uh, I also mentioned to the students, okay, you start here, you work very hard, maybe 30 years, you look back, you will, you will feel a good memories, okay? Uh, I see you join a meeting today, and your professor, Li Bin, I see you are very, very good teachers, okay? You can listen to your presentations, ask your questions, and uh, very good, very good teachers, very good professors. When you look back 30, 40 years later, you will benefit, you will, you will see. So, so, so keep doing good work, okay? And uh, I believe you'll be very successful, okay? Uh, maybe five or 10 years later, okay? And uh, one application, uh, I mentioned it before, uh, Professor Kevano uh, from Western, I mentioned it before, we, he applied a linear biology model to consultation, consultation problems. I applied my, not my, Yin and Graham's uh, uh, no linear elastic with pressure models to consultation problems. And um, uh, actually we did the work of the graduation. Uh, from Manitoba. I, I graduated in 1990, then I went to a consulting company in Halifax, okay, and I worked in the consulting company and um, I, 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 I finished this work, uh, the paper, okay, um, when I was working in the company to, to combine our nonlinear elastic with a partial model and the consultation problem to solve differential equations. Uh, I, I, I use the basic language, okay, to do the calculation because we have to rely on numerical uh, methods. Use the final difference to solve differential equation together. And this equation is basically from a uh, consultation equation, uh, from Tasaki uh, consultation share theory. You can also see this equation. This is excessive pressure, this is the strain rates. And uh, for this strain rates, we use this um, constant model. Uh, is developed by Yin and Graham, okay? Well, combine the two equations together, we solve together, then we can get a settlement, we can get accessible pressures, and so on. We solve it, okay? When I was working in the consulting firm, it's a very really hard time, okay? In 1990, 1991. And uh, I, I published this paper. You, you can see I solved the problems. I also, get, I also got data from the, from the literature for another paper published in Geotechnic, use other people's data to verify my model. You can see the comparison. Uh, regarding sediment, regarding accessible pressures, and the data from another paper, uh, it's very really good. The, the, the comparison is very really good. I published this paper in 1996. Uh, actually, oh, actually, I did the work, but finally I finished the paper when I joined the old university, okay, in 1996. So uh, the work was done in the consulting company, but finally the paper was written and submitted when I joined the university, published already. And uh, this paper actually, uh, later when some people told me, uh, your models are very popular in Europe. 
and uh, say you you can you can see one paper in geotechnic i made some good comments on your paper uh before i didn't know this review paper this is a review paper i published uh, in uh 2008 by uh, a professor in imperial college and professor john carter i know him very well uh, he's a former vice president uh newcastle if i remember newcastle and, and uh, he retired now uh, they published a review paper from uh, for all the paper published in geotechnic from 1948 to 2008 in the past 60 years uh, use the paper how of course re review more than 30 papers they consider the paper who uh, which made uh, uh, milestone contributions i believe more than 30 papers and uh, one of my papers published in this journal was reviewed uh, considered to be a milestone contributions Okay, okay, see, yeah, I don't go to details, especially on the creep. Okay, okay, I don't go to details, okay. And um, uh, some other professors in Japan, like Professor Matruda, also apply all models to, to, to model uh, the peat. Okay, this is a very, very soft source. Uh, you can see the strain and uh, the time curve, uh, all models match the data very well, but you only apply Tasaki's theory and uh, the sediment stop here, stop here, no further sediment because the Tasaki theory cannot, cons cannot consider Cree. So for KD source, you have to consider Cree. And the professor in Japan consider all models uh, performance is very good in comparison. I don't go to details. Okay, just to show you other people approved, your model is good, not by me. I don't go to details. Okay, this is Professor John Carter. I know him, uh, yeah, University of uh, Newcastle, Australia. I don't go to the details. Later, in my PhD study, I extend, this is the one dimension model I mentioned before, the one dimension model to three dimension. And how to extend is not easy, I tell you. You get the one dimension model relatively easy. How to get a three dimension model is uh, you need more assumptions. So when I extend my one dimension model to three dimensional models, uh, actually uh, is based on Pizarre's work. Pizarre's work is uh, published in 1966. Uh, he, he published the paper on viscous inelasticity. We have a so-called overstress function, okay, in, in the paper. It, this is a very classical paper, okay? And uh, then we also, is very famous, is the modified Cam Cam model, is a critical state model, uh, uh, published by uh, uh, Imperial College, okay? Professor John Burnham, Professor Roscoe. And, but the Cam 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 Cambridge model is the inelastic plastic model, cannot consider creep, okay? And this can, can consider creep, not so suitable for soils, okay? Not so suitable for soils, okay? So we combine one by Pizarre and by a, a Cambridge model, then by my one-dimensional model. One-dimensional model, three works together, we can get a three-dimensional model, okay? I don't go to details, okay? You can read my PhD thesis and it's all inside. Then later, when I join our university, uh, we you use a nine years later. I published uh, a model, three dimensional model, three nine years later. I have time to go back uh, to to write this paper. So publish this paper. So uh, I get a three dimensional model. Okay. So I don't go to details. So from one dimension to three dimension. Uh, for three dimension, uh, my model extension is based on other people's work, and also my one my one dimensional model. Okay. Also in the very uh, logic rigorous way. I don't go detail. So this is a very famous elliptical uh, yield surface in Cambridge, Cambridge, Cambridge model. I don't go into details. All the formulas, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we also apply this uh, three-dimensional model to, 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 to study a province happened in, in Canada. It's a, it's a so-called uh, Canadian Belfort Sea, uh, uh, Kaesong Retained Island. Uh, is north of Alberta. The island was built on the Shiano Sea water for oil and gas e exploration. Okay, when we built this kind of island, we they had observed a very strange phenomena. For example, they put the piezometers uh, on the list here in the soil. This is the sand, but this is in the soil. The pore pressure actually is uh, increased with the time. When the artificial island was built, that means the water load is, is almost constant, but the pore pressure can, can easily increase. Then after many, many days, then decrease. The population increase, decrease. 
actually, uh, at that time, I read some papers and uh, uh, some share, okay, the Pijoni company share uh, had uh, some research unit, on the unit, and they use um, Cambridge model uh, in the consultation, numerical simulation to want to, want to uh, reproduce this kind of population increase. Because the poverty is due to mental crime effects, uh, uh, you know, people know. And uh, but uh, but for the for the for this site in in Canada, uh, they use the Cambridge model. Uh, the software at that time, the software at that time was a crisp, crisp, crispy, crispy. It's a very famous uh, uh, final element software at that time. Okay, the Peugeot company uses that model uh, software to do the simulation, but cannot do, cannot reproduce. This can population increase. Okay, the the problem is I, I, when I when I see the paper I realized uh, the problem is the constant model no good. You use a uh, chemical model for this kind of clay soils, and you don't consider creep. It cannot is is not is useless, and because we have our model, our model is based on modified chemical model and it can consider creep. So I believe my model can explain the phenomena. So, so in Canada, in, in Hong Kong, I asked my student uh, to use my model to reanalyze this one, and um, then we can simulate the increase degrees very well. Later, we published a paper uh, further explains explains the mechanism why population continues to increase and decrease is mainly due to creep. Creep is an independent mechanism which can generate additional population. Uh, the, I, I believe Professor uh, uh, Tim Nielsen is, uh, is experienced in the soil test. How to approve this phenomena actually is very easy in the lab. In the lab. If we do the traction test on the carrier soils, okay, a sample, you, you see, see the sample uh, surrounded by membrane, you, you apply a consolidation pressure first, the soil will consolidate. Uh, excess pore pressure can be uh, zero uh, of, the, uh, of the consolidation. Then you close the valve, close the valve, well, or valve, the pulpit will, some pulpit will be generated again. Some people, some excess pulpit pressure will increase again, if you put the valve closed, because the creep or the skeleton will try to shrink, try to shrink, okay, to the creep, okay, but the total volume cannot be changed. Because the sample is surrounded by the membrane, total volume cannot be changed because the wall is closed. So, so in this uh, two, um, uh, two uh, counterparts, I mean, particles want to shrink, uh, the volume decreases. Shrink doesn't mean decrease, but it cannot because the wall is closed, then the pore pressure will be generated. We have, I have one paper, published in 1994, explain the creep is an in independent factor which can generate additional pore pressure. Okay, so I think um, I'm the first person to, to make this very clear, very clear. And it's also related to this, uh, uh, this, this uh, artificial island on the seabed in, in Canada. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention quite interesting, and uh, I developed the models, but I never commercialized my model. And uh, you know, this is a very famous software, Praxis. Okay, Praxis. In, the, in Praxis, this is one soft, uh, soft soil creep model uh, called SSC model built in in the praxis, okay? This model, the parameters you can see here, the parameters in my model is 95% are similar. 95% are similar, okay? Uh, you can see the relationship, okay? 95% are similar, okay? Even some uh, uh, parameters are a little different, but it's basically the same. That's, I use the copper over V, this is the copper star. It's, it's the same. It's the same, and uh, but uh, Praxis is commercial software and very popular, and uh, it's good for consulting companies. Okay, and uh, but what I want to say is I published my model in 1990 in my PhD thesis. My journal paper also published in 99, but they published a paper, a conference paper, a conference paper by Professor Vermeil. I know Professor Vermeil also as a Naha. I also know know him. Uh, 1999. In this model, what I want to say is I published my model much, much earlier than them. And but uh, finally, the, the model are quite similar. I believe, okay, I believe uh, Professor Vermeil and they did work independently. Okay, independently. I don't say they copied my model, okay. And uh, but 
I can prove, approve my model would publish much earlier. But uh, finally, I don't think they will copy my model. Okay? I believe they do, did work independently. What I want to say is we come to the same model, nearly the same model. But uh, they are good at the commercialization for this model in the practice. But I have no time to commercialize my model. Okay, You can see uh, in the future, if you want to apply uh, elastic with a model for some simulations, it's difficult for you to use my model but because my model is not in the commercial software. But if you have a practice, you apply this software so query model is easy. It's in the commercial package. Okay, so to mention to you, uh, you can also see my work, uh, which is um, is good, as good as Professor Wamir. Okay, uh, Professor Wamir retired already, and I don't go to detail details similarity of two models. Another thing to mention a little bit, um, um, a, a, a good point. Okay, a good point uh, for the automated test. Normally, people use a local function to feed the query. Okay, local function. And uh, you can see when the time increase, and uh, then the voice ratio will decrease. This is the initial voice ratio. Okay, this is the negative. When the time increase, the voice ratio will decrease. But when the time is infinity, okay, I see the time is huge, infinity, many years, then this is negative. This voice ratio can be negative. A negative voice ratio for soil mechanics uh, meaningless is wrong. Voice ratio for soils cannot be negative, right? Actually, is the problem occurs because the, this feeding function is a problem. It's not because the data is a feeding problem, okay? So actually, in the local scale, this line not go to straight line, should go slow down, slow down, okay? There's a limit, okay? Again, for compression, we face the same problem. For compression, we use a local stress, you can see stress is a pretty constant pressure. Okay, with stress in infinity, this one can, this should be CC, is wrong, not CV, CC. Okay, this is CC. The negative, this can be also negative. But in reality, not negative. You can see, you can see the figure from the brain. The curve, you see, finally go, go to flat, okay? Go to flat, not really go down. Cannot be negative. So this is a linear function, uh, but the local function, is, this function not so good. So I propose a new function, which actually is really good, I tell you. Okay, so I just go here. Uh, I propose a new function. I published the paper in Geotechnic, a small article, a small technical note, 1999. And I combine local function with hyperbolic function. Okay, you, you know, this is a very famous uh, hyperbolic function, x, x, and y, this is a, b, two constant, but x, I use a NOC. NOC, okay? You should consider two together, hyperbolic function, local function, because the uh, hyperbolic function has a limit. And uh, but x can be log. So two together and it can feed the data very well. Okay. If you don't believe me, you can try. Very good feeding. Okay, very good feeding. Okay. So I don't go to details to save time for discussion. Okay. And uh, we other people have also extended my model to different areas. I don't go to details. I don't go to details, including temperature. Okay, recently my students did it. I published two papers already, how to consider temperatures in this model is, is new. I know some people in Canada are doing the same thing. I don't go to details. And uh, recently we published a paper to, to calculate the sediment, a simple final one, I don't go to details. Uh, I mentioned before, to calculate sediment, uh, we can combine uh, elastic uh, risk of proxy model together with the consolidation equation, we have to use a numerical methods to solve it. Then we get the sediment, blah, blah, blah. But it's difficult for engineers. You have to know new numerical methods. You have to do the programming. It's very difficult. So recently, we proposed a simplified method, and everything can be done by hand. And uh, uh, the, finally, the results are very good, very accurate. And this is very good for engineers. For this method, actually, uh, has been uh, I mentioned to you before, has been accepted by the Canadian Foundation Engineer Manual. Okay, in the fifth edition, not published yet, very soon this year. So in Montreal and in Lava University, I'm going to I'm going to explain this method in more details. Today I don't go to details. Okay. And we can also verify this method, simple method is good, accurate. I don't go to details. Conclusions. Okay, the first one, uh, I think I believe uh, for for all of you, no matter it's soft rock, soils. Uh, frozen soils, this rule 
is true. The quip strain rate, that means the viscoplasty strain rate is dependent on the stress strain only. The stress here is the effect of stress, okay? Nothing to do with the loading path, okay? And also, all one-dimensional elastic viscoplasty model is a good rigorous extension of Maxwell's linear real natural model to consider non-linear viscoplastic behavior of the source in one D training. And uh, all three-dimensional model is also a good extension of modified KMK model because the modified KMK model cannot consider creep, but uh, all models can consider creep, okay, with applications. And also all new non-linear functions has uh, overcome the limitations of many other functions, not the local function I mentioned before, has no limit. Voice ratio can become negative, is it certainly is, is wrong. And um, it is an accident for fitting creep strain, compression strains of source in one D straining with the limit. Okay. Uh, more verification extension application have been done by others and by us. And uh, to demonstrate the validation usefulness of the concept, the framework, and all one di three dimensional models, okay, done by other people. Okay. And uh, thanks to many people who contributed to this work, including Professor Jim Graham, my former students, a financial support. I also thank you for your attention. Okay, I'm real happy to answer your questions. Okay. Okay, uh, please, please. I have two questions. Okay, okay, yeah, go ahead. First question is that uh, in the constitutive equations, Geological model, uh, you uh, showed that it's written in terms of effective stress. Yeah. And you had a separate equation for con uh, continuity for the water pressure. Uh, so I have also seen it in like liquefaction uh, analysis of sand. They write the equations in effective stress. So my question is that uh, how do they calculate the excess pore water pressure, especially for like coupled analysis? between the formation and water pressure in a complex 3D problem. How do they calculate the excess pore pressure at each point to get the effective stress to use the equations? Good point, good, good point. I wanted to explain to you, okay. My second question. Okay, okay. Let me answer your first question first. Thanks. Otherwise, I, I cannot remember. Uh, good, very good question. Okay, I wanna show you. Especially, you mentioned the refraction. Um, the refraction, on the on the uh, cyclic loading on the sesame loading liquefaction is that means uh, 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 the pore pressure generated additional pore pressure then finally make effectors near the zero then the, the soil has no shear strength so you know why liquefaction can generate additional excess pore pressure because for the sand liquefaction normally we have to see on the sand on the shaking on the shaking particles try to get it dense Try to get it dense, right? You can you might you for dry sand, you can do the shaking. If no pore pressure, you can you can observe. On the shaking, the particle will come, come, come across. That's a train. But because uh, on the liquefaction is on the sesium loading, it happened very quick, maybe one second, maybe half a second, the pore pressure cannot come out quickly. So at that moment, the soil, the saturated sand is nearly the volume of our volume is nearly constant. It's similar to, I mean, before the tra traction test. You close the valve, the total volume will not change, but a creep, want to make a creep, the, the creep, but the creep want to make uh, the clay particles to shrink. It's similar to the same particles on the side of the the particle come to shrink. The all, all for the sand has a train to shrink the volume, but uh, in so short a time, the volume cannot be shrinked cannot be reduced. The particle cannot come too close, then we generate excess pore pressure. For creep is similar. Creep want to make particles uh, to come together, shrink, but uh, the overall volume cannot be changed. Is it maintained a constant, then we have pore pressure. It's a noting unnoting process inside. You read my paper uh, published by Ian Clark and Graham. Clark is a Jack Clark, former director of uh, CECO. Professor Jack, I worked for him, okay, in CECO for two years. I published the paper and explained the meaning of why creep is an independent mechanism uh, which can cause, uh, cause excessive pressure. It's very similar to liquefaction. 
you know what I mean? It's very similar. So you ask this question, uh, it's very similar. And also how to consider this one, you have to compare a uh, good consumer models together with uh, consultation equations to simulate. But for the function is different. Legal function, you, you also have to consider legal function is also a company problem. It's also a company problem. But uh, the constant models, probably um, you cannot use uh, enough viscous plastic, maybe another another model. Not, not ordinary enough plastic model, I tell you, uh, cannot solve the problem for legal function. Uh, I'm not an expert in that area. You have to consider, use the constant, constant models which can consider unloading, reloading behavior uh, with a loop, with a loop, okay? Uh, you can see some uh, constant models for, for sand on the liquefaction loading, okay? But it's still a carpeting problems, okay? That solve together, can experience the phenomena. So you, your points, your question are, are, um, is a very good. Liquefaction creep, the excess pressure increase, in some way, the similar. Mechanisms are different, okay? Another question? And my second question is that uh, this uh, two stages primary consolidation and also the grid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these two stages, which is uh, this deformation, this excessive settlement, is it caused by uh, volumetric strains or is it shear strains of the soil? Uh, and uh, when the whole embankment goes down, does this neighboring soil give upwards? Or is it something like that or mm -hmm. goes all down? Is there uh, also shear strains or all volumetric content? Uh, you can see, I uh, will answer one by one. And uh, for, for automated tests, automated tests, because it, the compression is under confined conditions. So we only have vertical strain, a horizontal strain is zero. So that in he, this particular case, the vertical strain, a volumetric strain are equal. So that, so that you can see is a volumetric uh, compression. You can see is, is a confined condition, uh, confined, co confined condition is the same thing because the vertical strain, a uh, volumetric strain equal. Natural strain is zero. Okay, that's the one. Another one is, uh, is on the one dimensional, uh, is on the shear or on the normal shears. Yes. That's a different issue. I'm going down. Okay, oh, uh, island. For the island is uh, is another issue. Island for for the, especially for the island I mentioned to you uh, today for the artificial island is not a automatic condition. It's not a confined condition. It's the asymmetric condition because the island is circular. Okay, it's the asymmetric condition. It's a two dimensional problem. So for that problem, uh, the the motor at uh, uh, here cannot be used. This is a one dimensional motor. On the, for this automatic condition, okay, we have to use. Another model, three-dimensional elastic with plus model. It's a three-dimensional problem. In that case, for this artificial island, we have word compression, we have natural movement. So we have compression, we have shear together. So model, constant model we have to use is a three-dimensional one. You know what I mean? Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, please. Um, down on to the last point. Uh, why... Oh, wait, in this line or which line? The islands about okay, the artificial island, okay. So, why, um, okay, uh, yeah, this, how uh, huh? with the graph with the graph of the compression versus time, it eventually becomes stable over time. Why is this if the area is not confined? Like, oh, you mean this is artificial island is not confined? I remember from the runway example, uh, okay, for, for the runway in Japan. But for runway, Japan uh, is also not, not a perfect one-dimensional automated condition. Because uh, you, can, you can see artificial island here, and uh, the, the loading is not, uh, 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 is not uniform loading. In, for artificial island, I believe uh, we also need to consider uh, three-dimensional effects. For, for the artificial islands in Japan, I mean Japan, because it is not the perfect uh, one-dimensional problem. Is uh, you have to consider two-dimensional, three-dimensional effects. But no matter one-dimension, three-dimension, a uh, creep must be considered uh, properly in in the calculation or simulation. You, you know what I mean. So so is that my answer? Is okay? Kind of. Oh, kind of. You continue. Maybe I, I don't fully understand. Okay. I was just wondering because the graph didn't keep going down because I assume if it's in in the middle of an ocean, it's an island. Then is this island or Japanese one? Japanese. Okay, oh, that's a good question. Okay, let me go back. Uh, I went to a wrong slide. Yeah, that's also quite interesting. 
uh, you can see uh, this is the first one. You can go to second one. Um, maybe first one is okay. The sediment continues to increase, but uh, the the rate of sediment is getting slower, slower, smaller, smaller. Okay, is this okay? Question yes. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, I downloaded the data uh, many years ago. You see, by 2020, but uh, 23 years later, uh, the data you can see the data. Uh, actually, when uh, about three years ago, I tried to knock in the same website, but it disappeared. And I heard from another professor, they said they changed the location of the website. But Japanese people, this, uh, they publish the data, real data on the website. But I, I, haven't, I have not updated the data yet. But I believe I can probably next I will contact a professor, uh, is a Professor Watapi, who was a senior people in a Japan Port Works Research Laboratory, a research institute. Uh, he was a senior people there. Now, I don't know, a few years ago, he moved to university. I, I had contacted him uh, recently, but I, I have no time to ask him the question. Uh, the new, new location of this website, so I can see, I can have some updated data, you see? Uh, 2000, uh, 2018. Okay, maybe maybe more than 20 years later, there will be more data. I believe so. This will continue to increase, but it's it slow down. Because it's not, um, but I don't have data yet. So this certainly this is a big issue for engineers. The post-construction sediment is so big. It's very really bad for the airport. Okay, the, for second one, is is better. The first, second one is better, okay? It's better, okay? It's smaller, okay, it's better. So we have to consider the creep of the source in the sediment calculations, no matter one dimension, two dimension, three dimension. Any question? Uh, okay, uh, uh, Professor Nielsen. Uh, two questions. Uh, okay. First one's quite practical. We, we know creep occurs, we can measure creep. What do we do about it? Can we, for instance, manipulate the poor water chemistry? Is, is there any set of solutions that we might adopt? <laughs> What do you mean? Uh... Well, if, if we believe that the phenomenon causing this is down to the absorbed water. Oh, absorbed water, okay. For water chemistry to change that. Um, I think if, um, if the water is not the ordinary water, okay, uh, for some special water, for, I, I think you study the tennis dam, some people study some, um, some uh, waste disposal site, if the water it was contaminated, contains some other chemicals, I believe the, the creep property will be changed. Will be changed. So, uh, but for me, I have not studied it yet. I haven't studied it yet. But uh, some concept here can be extended for other contaminated soils. Even I know one professor in China, in Georgia University, extend my model of, to the solid waste uh, site, uh, disposal site. Uh, because they consider some degradation issues, chemical reaction issues, uh, some other issues, um, some other professor, but uh, all basic concept, uh, he still borrow, still borrow. So, but uh, consider other factors. So regarding other, other kind of waters, okay, uh, we have to take into account. I believe this creep uh, curve maybe will be changed by diff different chemistries in the waters. Well, my second question, I'm glad you've stopped at this because this is what I was going to ask you about is I, I've been telling my students for years about what happens after infinite time. So okay. Glad you put that point in there. What happens with the creep during the primary consolidation? Do we, is the projection of a, of a line like you have, is that correct or the fact that we have two phenomena going on that's causing volume change? Is it something slightly different? What do, we, uh, what do we know about the creep that's going on during primary consolidation? Okay, okay, good, good point. Good point, okay. And uh, I say, okay, this is a good point, okay. Um, I say, I said before, um, uh, this is a creep we can see very clearly because it says pressure is a zero or near zero. But something here, people don't see very clearly. Uh, okay, we imagine, okay, we imagine this curve is from a thickness of a soil, say one meter. Okay, imagine, uh, imagine, so this, this curve is for one meter the sample, one meter sample, we did the test. That means this time will be much bigger, okay? This time will be much bigger, okay? 
then for this one meter, this one meter source, I say creep occurred during primary consultation. That means here, uh, people don't believe it because we don't see it clearly. Uh, how do we approve it? Okay, how do you approve it? Then you can do another test, not the one meter, for the same soil, a half a meter. They do the same test. You can get a curve like this one. I, do, I cannot draw something. I can have no pen. I can draw a curve from here, come to here, then come to here. Okay, this curve we will swing it to here. That means for half a meter, then we have a creep here. This creep is the extension of this line. That's the proof for half a meter. But you still don't believe it. Then you can do another, another test for only 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters. Okay. Then the curve will be come to here. Come to here. Then the, this, this uh, uh, end of primary consultation point will come to here. Then finally is this line. This line can be extension of this line. Then you can do further for the laboratory, normal laboratory test, the sample only 20 millimeters. Then same, the, the curve will come to even closer to here, then to here. So we can verify the creep occurred during the primary consultation or not, by do the test of the samples with different thickness. Finally, you can see it, it all, all come to this line. Okay, that's one answer. Okay, how to approve. Not easy. Because you do a test on two meet, uh, one meter thick, it take a long time. So not easy. And especially, you have to keep the sample the same sample, the same initial wash ratio and so on. Otherwise, it's difficult to compare. Um, another thing I want to mention to you is, um, uh, uh, say this is a primary consultation, this is not the extending inside. We cannot say, um, in the primary country, this line can be extended back on the one condition is on the same work stress, on the same work effect stress. Okay, but in reality, in the primary condition, vertical effect stress is changing with the time, is increasing with the time, it's not a constant. So that the real path, the real path of a work ratio, um, this part is this kind of curve, is this kind of curve, you know, this line. Because the effect stress in the primary construction is, is increasing with time, it's not a constant. You know what I mean? But uh, no matter is it is, is changing, or no matter is a constant, but this area, we have a creep. We have a creep. That's my, my answer. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Nielsen. Any other questions? Uh, for the frozen soils, uh, keep in mind. You can you can think about it. Um, the the creep rate, the stress, uh, the strain is unique. Uh, plus temperature. Temperature is the independent factors. I have to consider temperature. Uh, maybe uh, effect stress, strain, creep rate, and the temperature. They put four, four four dimensions. Okay, you can you can get a, a, a new constant models. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, you you can distribute my PPT to the people who have interest. Okay. Thank you for uh, for yeah. Okay. Um, and you'll be sticking around for at least a little bit if anyone wants to inform. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Go ahead yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh uh, yes yes. Keep 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 checking up. Yes, it's not a good way. Not a good way. Okay, not a good way. Okay, give okay, we send this to you. Not a good. Way. Okay, I'm going to for example, similar to the Yes.